This is Science Quest. With your host, Jed Allen Friel. Everything science. Hi, I'm Jen Allen Friels, and thanks for joining me today on Science Quest. Hey, today on Science Quest, we're going to mix a little bit of science with a little bit of art. Now, you may be wondering, what does art have to do with science? Well, I want to tell you about a little daydream I had. And I was daydreaming about deoxyribonucleic acid, you know, DNA. Here's what started the daydream. I was on one of our trips and I was hung up in a hotel room and I was watching one of those CSI shows. I don't know why, maybe it was the only thing on TV. But they were talking about DNA and it occurred to me that most people think DNA is a human thing. Now I'm not saying it's not in every human being, but DNA is not a human thing at all. It's a living thing. And then it occurred to me that most people don't get that every single living thing is made of four simple amino acids. A, T, C, and G. That's right. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine make up every single living thing. I don't care if it's a blade of grass or a human being. I don't care if it's a dolphin or a tree. I don't care if it's a spider or a sponge living on a reef somewhere on the Great Barrier. They're all made out of DNA, the same four basic building blocks of life. Now what does that have to do with where I'm standing at today? Well, let me tell you where my daydream went. I dreamed about building a 14,000 pound structure that people would see and it looked like DNA. So where are we? We're in my welding shop back on the ranch. Here's what I'm going to do. I've taken 14,000 pounds of steel and I'm going to build a 20 foot tall DNA model. Now here's what it's going to look like. I started doodling a little bit and I thought, well, why not build a great big DNA base pair with a spire out the top that says life. And then when we get done with that, we would put support systems in. So when people walk up to it, they see a 20 foot tall model of DNA. I had my boys over at one of the local fabricating shops run it through their CAD program. And sure enough, 24 base pairs with a spire of eight inch I-beam weighing 80 pounds a piece puts me at 20 feet. Then I had them run it through their wind tunnel. When they run it through their wind tunnel, they decided to add the sugars around the outside and the phosphates with some 11 gauge 10 inch steel. That 11 gauge 10 inch steel will wrap its way around the column all the way to the top. Now, by doing that, that'll give our structure some rigidity. Now here's what's going to happen. Every time we lift a beam up into place with our hoist here in the welding shop, we set it down and we weld it fast. Now you'll see our chalk markings. Those will be weld and there will be stiffeners welded into place to give us the joints between A and T and of course our C and G joints. And then our C's and our G's and our A's and our T's will be welded into place. When I get done, I'll have 24 base pairs that I will have welded into place. Now that's not the coolest part because then I started daydreaming some more. And I thought, how am I going to get people convinced that DNA is in every single living thing? How do I turn it into a real piece of art? So I started doodling and here's what I came up with. What if I took a human and I built it out of the same I-beam? So stay with me here. Let's pretend that this I-beam is my human's leg. And my human is 10 foot tall. But he's built out of I-beam. And he's stretching up. And he's grabbing for the DNA supporting him. He's supporting the DNA. The DNA is supporting the human. But here's the catch. On the same structure, on the same piece of art, we take the other corner and we use the same I-beam. But on this corner, we build a giant tree also reaching out, entwining itself with the DNA, suggesting that the human and the tree are made out of the same type of DNA. And on the back corner, a dolphin riding out of the ocean, touching it, along with a shark representing all of the living things in the ocean. And on the front, a spider 
representing the insect world, crawling up through the DNA. And on the very, very top, representing bird kingdoms, a same idea, eight inch channel iron, but a bird landing. Conceptually, it looks a little bit like this. Our DNA model with our human, our tree, our spider, our dolphin, all reaching out for the very thing that supports their life. D N A. Deoxyribonucleic acid. You see, it's in every single living thing. Humans don't own DNA, but neither do trees, neither do spiders. We're all connected through those four base pairs. A, T, C, and G. My goal is to take science and art, put them together, and when we get done, I want them to say, wow, that's a really big DNA model. But then as they look closer, and they notice that all of the creatures around the DNA are built out of the very eye beam that the DNA is built out of, I want them to hopefully say, wow, I get it? We're all made of the same thing. If we accomplish that, we'll do what art truly is intended to do. And that makes people think, make people question, make people try to get to a deeper level about the things around them. Maybe we'll not only understand ourselves a little bit better, but we'll try to understand how we are intertwined with every living thing. Hey, check back in in 30 days, because in 30 days, life one will be 20 feet tall, representing deoxyribonucleic acid. I'm Jed Allen Friels. Thanks for joining me today on Science Quest.